Okay, how do you know when to pay yourself a salary as a CEO of a company? You should pay yourself $60,000 a year if you're the CEO of a company or whatever is the normal rate for the city that you're living in. So you don't care about money. You should do that when you have either generated enough revenue or raised enough money where that is reasonable to do. Let's say you've only raised $100,000. Do not pay yourself $60,000 in salary. But if you raise $600,000, it becomes reasonable to pay yourself 60K a year. So make a target for how much you want to raise. And then when you've raised that target, then it becomes reasonable to raise it for yourself. And the way to do that, if you're a seed stage company and you don't yet have a board, you don't have, find an external advisor who is legitimate, right? Someone who you can consider like a CEO coach and then send them an email. Hey, how much should I pay myself a salary? And then they'll tell you 60K, 65K, whatever. And then you have an email thread that's good. And that's what you do. So I have five pillars in my life that I always make sure that I maintain. Number one. I uh, count my macronutrients. So I eat about 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. I eat about 50 to 60 grams of fat per day. And if I'm cutting 130 grams of carbs, if I'm bulking like 300 grams of carbs, number two, I work out every day. Number three, I like need to listen to audiobooks. Otherwise my brain turns to mush. I spend time giving love to other people. I spend time writing music or listening to music. Those things are important to me. They come before everything else. You'll notice that there's things that are not important to me. Like for example, sleep. But for some people that does need to be in your pillars. So figure out what you need to operate well and do not compromise on those things. And then uh, that'll help. The other thing I recommend is doing an elimination diet. So I like took out dairy from my diet for like a week. I took out gluten from my dairy for, uh, diet for a week. And I saw how my energy modulated up and down. I recommend doing that too. And then work with something that you love. Learn fast, fire in the belly for the product, high loyalty to the team, which by the way is extremely important. If you are interviewing someone and you get even the sense that they're dishonest or not loyal, it doesn't matter how legit they are, do not let them within a mile of your company. And then they move metrics and ship features. So move metrics is then let's say you want your install to pay to go from like 4% to 4.5%. Measure them actually according to the results, not just according to what they say. No, I feel like I'm having fun all the time. So Jeff Bezos, when asked this question, talks about not work-life balance, but work-life harmony. It just sounds cliche, but if you find, you know, something that you love, you will not work for a day in your life, whatever. There are times when I do things that I hate. I hate filing patents. It's so annoying and draining. Eventually, I made a video on how to file a provisional patent. You can find it on YouTube. It has a lot of views. Because I was so annoyed with it, it's like a deranged DMV employee put this thing together. So I try to avoid doing things that take away energy from me. And so what I typically will do is I will hire people onto the team that are good at these things and get energy from it, right? So I'm not the best at coding. My brother's really good at coding. So Tyler does most of the AI engineering. He does the math. He does the implementation. We have 70 other people on the team. We do that. I get energy from doing videos. So there's less people doing videos. I do the videos. So you got to do all the things that suck in the beginning. And then when you pass a certain point, just start hiring people to do the things that you don't enjoy. So like I love listening to audiobooks. Someone in the company is going to be responsible for curation of what audiobooks go on the front page. It's probably going to be me because I listen to a lot of audiobooks. So make sure that your job is composed of only the things that you like and not the things that you don't like. I don't listen to news. I don't read news. I read a lot of history. Like my favorite podcast right now is this great podcast by Ben Wilson called How to Take Over the World. So it's the summaries of the lives of like Napoleon, Alexander the Great. Um, when it comes to technology, like, you know, Tyler did his master's in AI. So he, he, he's like very plugged into what's going on, right? Same thing for Liam or Rajiv or Rahil on team. We read things that excite us, but we are not led by what the trend is right now. We are led by what is the thing that we want to build. And I spend all of my time talking to users and listening to users, not kind of reading the news. And then as you build and you learn and you grow, you, you see what's available out there. So the answer is, how do I keep up with trends? I don't. I listen to users. I figure out what they want. And then I Google around to try and figure out how to build the things that they want. So they wanted to listen with better voices. So we ended up building like on-device voices generated with like Snoop Dogg's voice or Gwyneth Paltrow's voice or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, Slack doesn't work for me because there's so many people on the Slack. So I personally will use Slack to keep up to date, but I ask people to message me on WhatsApp, iMessage or email. I'll send voice notes to people and I demand that if you send me a voice note, it's on WhatsApp so I can double speed listen to it. I make a lot of videos. We have one all hands meeting every month and everybody else talks and I talk at the end to summarize things that are important. For the people who live in me in the same house, they're all like literally mind meld. They all know what we're supposed to do. I've realized that some things come intuitively to me, but not necessarily to others. For example, the business model for speech. So I, every single time I have a chance to talk to the entire company, I reiterate, here's how performance marketing works. Here's how ad conversion works. Like you need to get 1% here, 5% here, 20% here. Otherwise, the business doesn't work. We have written culture at Speechify, so everything is documented for the most part. We didn't until about a, six months ago because we didn't need to because we were small enough. We grew, 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 grew really fast to like 120, and then we kind of like chilled, and now we're like hovering between 100 and 120 people, and we're going to nail how to do that really well, which we basically have, but I want to really get good at it, and then we'll grow. One of the things that is on my to-do list, how I'm going to grow the most in the next two years, is I'm really good at leading a 15-person team in one place, and I'm good at leading a 100-person international team, but I want to be world-class at leading a 1,000-person team. And if you study the best people in the world who are good at leading millions of people, 
JFK and Churchill, and sadly Hitler, they did it because they used new technology, right? So JFK had fireside chats over the radio, right? Churchill, we will fight on beaches, we will fight on landing grounds, we will fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. They figured out how to use new technology, the radio. So now when I look at people who are really good, they use podcasts, they use YouTube videos, they use writing. So I, a lot of the time, try to figure out how to become a better writer in order to be better at leading international teams. And no matter how hard you try, you never will get the same impact as if you go in person and meet with people in person. So, right, a week or two ago, I literally went to India, to New Delhi, and then I went to a city outside New Delhi, and I stayed with the 70-year-old, 70-year-old father of our head of engineering. Like, that's such a cool experience to me. That is the magic of life, right? Alongside of building something that impacts tens of millions of people, making in-person connections with people is the most valuable part. And so one principle that I'm also working on right now is getting really good at not letting myself not go to a place because there's friction to go there, right? So like, it was friction for me to come here. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna ignore the length of the Uber ride or the length of the plane ride because when I get there, I'll make friends with new people and it'll give me energy.